Welcome back for the JP Morgan Tournament of Champions 2020. We're live from New York City. Nicky Muller will be kicking off against Yusuf Solomon. Focused and, and motivated, and it's frustrating three, for him. It's Solomon. very evident. He's uh, one game to love. hugely up against it before even stepping on the court, Muller. So the first game going to the younger Egyptian, Yusuf Solomon. Just seven minutes leading now. One game to love. That is a wicked shot from Solomon. And out. Soaring through Eight the six. air. Incredible control. That's good. Good attack from Muller. Great hands. Very, very well played. Great hands. Wants the court wiped. The court attendant, please. Actually, from our cameras, it doesn't really look. That looks fine, doesn't it? Taking his time. He's puffing here. Those big quads are starting to fill up with a bit of the old lactic acid. Oh, he's made the error. Nicky Muller, look at the reaction of Solomon. Oh, he's going to be relieved. He looks up to the wondrous chandelier, thanking his lucky light bulbs. Coverage there, beautiful shot, orthodox leg as we say. And out, three, one. Left foot forward, getting into the zone, him ever to be dodgy in that respect at all. Six, three. Yeah, it's important he won that point. Away by Muller. 
It was fantastic to see from Muller. It's well read, good width. Oh, it's awesome work, so the Swiss Rocket responds. You can hear the atmosphere here in New York building. Solomon leads two games to one. A real fight back here from the Swiss number one based in Paderborn in Germany. The, Aust the old Australian um, glass court that was used for the Commonwealth Games, not the latest one, but the one in Melbourne. I think it was in 2006. They've actually they used it for an exhibition with Rami Shaw and Lauren, Lauren Zanjima uh, a few, uh, about a month or two ago. And they took it, they cut it Four around line. the out-of-court line. So basically when the ball was out, it was out. And it said it worked really yeah. well. So somebody's, li somebody's listening to me. So Muller trying to get the wheels going. Slam that straight into the nick. Left box. No way Solomon's going to Four get eight. that one. Well, there you go. There's the squeeze. He's had to play very well. Nicky Muller. That's out of sorts and will be for a period, five. and that's. Uh, very, very understandable. The use of Solomon, concentrating well, knowing fully well how dangerous Nicky Muller is. A good quality match to kick us off here today. Uh, 47 minutes. Know, Solomon Nicky gets his first win over Miller. Serb from France taking on Abdullah Al Tamimi of Qatar. Playing was uh, considerable. Full credit because he actually produced the goods, didn't he? That can come with his added pressure. He was so unlucky, wasn't he? He yeah. had an opportunity to go one stage further. Oh my oh, goodness me! <laughs> that's a great shot. Look at this shot. Oh, that was slick. Were you ever refereed by Wei Schmidt? Back um, in the day, was he refereeing when you were playing? No, he wasn't. No. What about yourself? Yeah, he refereed me once in Toronto, playing Sean Delier <laughs> for the Cambridge Eight. Club. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Five games. Six game balls for the Frenchman to take this first game. I have, to, I have to be honest, this has been a very poor start from Tamimi. Certainly not picking up where he left off after the Worlds. That's dreadful. Great start from the Frenchman, though. Lucas uh, maximising decent quality squash and a lot of unforced errors from his opponent. I forgot to ask your prediction, but I mean, the way you were talking previously, you're obviously very confident, and rightly so, because of the performance we witnessed consistently in Qatar. Yeah, for me, Joey, the, the level of squash that I saw from El Tamimi on that, in that event, through its entirety, to be fair, because he started off well and just and kept it going. I felt as though he'd actually gone up a gear. And it would be a little bit too sharp and a bit too accurate. That's a lovely hold from Lucas Serm, though. I felt he would have come through this. You play a lot of French, uh, French league squash back in the day? I did, back in the day. Work. He's playing very well, actually. Yeah, he is. He's moving fair. the ball around very intelligently, and he's not 
giving any free points away. There's again, that's better from Tamimi. He had to really step up the court though, the Oryx. And out for six. They have a, a little bit of a, a minor injury after playing in Qatar, Tamimi. It looks pretty fine now though. Movement is dynamic as ever. Oh, he's drilled him. Unintentionally, but he's given him. <laughs> certainly gave it a bit there. Watch this, PJ. He's very accurate to hit him in the calf muscle. Goodness gracious me, this is absolutely... That's a dreadful shot. Well, I mean, I said, he's not making, shot. I said he's not making life easier for himself. He was serving just moments ago, 10-8, and he's, Two gone tins. he's gone absolutely peanutville. What an opportunity here for Lucas Cern, PJ. I mean, he hasn't, I mean, that's a great tight ball there, in all fairness, but it's just being given to him by Tamimi. Complete uh, mental lapse from the youngster. Okay, that's the way it is. This uh, Tamimi's going around the house making huge amounts of mess, like my five-year-old. <laughs> and uh, Lucas <laughs> Sam's going like some. <laughs> tidying it up. Yeah. Tidying it up. It's the old saying: the apple <laughs> doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> yeah, particularly in Somerset. Oh dear, oh dear, complete head off for uh, Tamimi. That is a prime example of how to squander a two game ball opportunity. Lucas um, is steady as ever out there, and it's Tamimi that's like a kind of Qatari sandstorm that's going all over the place, but blowing back in his own eyes. So Lucas um, leading two games to love. Ripping boast. Oh, that's nice. It's tidy work. It's, again, Joey, it's, it's just very simple squash. He's but got. To me, he's got better. Got better, more severe. Bounce of the balls come out a bit more. And Lucas Serm is struggling. That's the wrong wall. <laughs> oh, there we go. I mean, that's it's a maverick you're looking at with Tamimi. Talk about coaching and trying to keep him disciplined. Oh. The old leisure centre boast is the first one we've seen so far this week. It's perked you up, Peach. It certainly has. I mean, this is an absolute ripper. He's managed to get it between his legs. <laughs> so Lucas uh, trying to respond to the mid-stage of this fourth game, leading by two games to one. Very fair, Lucas. Um, real example for any of those junior players out there. Tries to play through every ball, it's very clean. Does suit him playing a free flowing game, though. He's Ooh. been sent the wrong way. He was off to the Harvard club. And out, six, four. Oh, he really. <laughs> Well, that's a great post. It's tight, though. It's I mean, talk about... There's another lesson for players. When you're playing against somebody so quick like Tamimi, you get the ball in tight, and it doesn't matter if it's heavy. Lucas Serm is on the ascendancy. Oh, oh my, goodness. my goodness me. That is... We talk about the stress of Rod Martin dealing with Tamimi, but in the French corner... Oh, my goodness me. Two absolute shanks. 
he needs to check his racket. 48 minutes in this encounter, and it's gone to five. Tamimi's come back from two games to love. Well, he's crept back, isn't he, sir? He's done well. He's done very well. And he squeezed him again, and it's back to two all for all. And I won't say any more than that. Oh, you don't need to. Leave it to me. Oh, he's got well, it's the old boast. Just when you need it. It's nice to pull one of those out of the bag. Hit it with uh, a real. Shot. It's the right shot to play. It just doesn't have, need to be that fine of a margin. Oh, he's just used all his oh. lengthy range to stay. <laughs> I hear him grunting, sir. Well played. And the reaction, he was too loved down. Good mental comeback for this very talented Qatari. Lucas Erm will be licking his wounds. He had an opportunity in the fourth game. A massive opportunity. It wasn't to be 63 minutes for a five-game roller coaster. It's got Arturo Salazar, the Latin American, up against. Mathieu Cassinier, the Frenchman. Extensive rally there, just three points in. Oddly enough, but no, he got battered pillar to post, but again, it was the experience that saw him through that one. So, well, there was a call there from the referee. That... <laughs> no, is he going to pretend he didn't do it? <laughs> yeah. oh, that's good, that's rapid from Salazar. We're carrying on as if um, nothing happened. <laughs> So no, well, looks, I, got sorry, Lee, just, the, just how, for the first three matches that we've seen, sorry, just how dead the ball is. I mean, obviously it'll warm up as the it's very chilly outside, but this court generally plays quite warm. Mexican, can he keep that and extending that through to the end of the game? This is where, for me, the former number four or six in the world just has that little bit more wealth of knowledge and experience. Well, it's a huge rally. It's well played by Cassinier. I don't know what PJ's been on. So I tell you what, it's though, only going to go one way from here. It's better to have a peak than never to peak. <laughs> oh, I like it. First game goes to Castanier. The experience shines through. Yeah, and it was more of a mindset shift as well. I think if you're not careful, it's easy to get a little bit dormant or lapsadaisical with that movement patterns. And if you don't use that urgency, it's, it's just a bit of a waste. So many players we see use that speed to just get out of trouble. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Love that little hold from Cassini. He's done it again. Oh, look at that. Brilliant. Twice in a row. You can see he's onto the ball quickly. The racket's ready early. So many options from that top of the swing. We'll see it here. And then at the last second, just flicks the ball cross court.
Well, it's completely out to sea here, and you have to put a lot of that down to the fact that Castagne has improved his game here in the second. Started to vary it a lot more. Eight game balls here for the Frenchman. That's a wicked little counter drop like that from Castagne. Solid from him. Dominant second game from Castagne. <laughs> we saw that with Tamimi in the match previously. I just I think it's one of those where he's trying to find a game plan that's going to have any joy against Castagne, but it's got, he's just got it completely wrong at the moment. Well, a great little boast from Castagne. It's like a little fencing movement, that, on guard. This boast is ripping Salazar around oh, the court. Dear, dear. He's all over it. How clinical has Castaneda been with a short ball? But how could, yeah, exactly. The finish here, the, the control of racket head. Well, this is a match for me that should he come through this, Castaneda. Oh. It's one of those where you really enjoy it. It's, every now and again in a player's career, you have these games where everything just seems to click into place, and that's what we're seeing here. Salazar looking lost in the back there. Seven match balls to the French player. He's played it. He just doesn't want this match to stop. <laughs> if he could bottle this up and take it with him into the next round, he's going to be a handful. <laughs> well, you might ask if he could play follow on, just keep it going. <laughs> Well, it's impressive from Mathieu Castagne. Only 27 minutes to dispatch Arturo Salazar, three love. Campbell Grayson taking on Edmund Lopez of Spain. Yeah, definitely. I think um, solo and ghosting are absolute necessities and fundamentals for any pl aspiring player or any established player because it's something you can just do on your own. You, you've got complete control of it and, you know, you can spend as many hours as you you want or need accumulating it, and, and they're both just hugely important. It's also the discipline factor. A lot of people just see the way Edmund Lopez, he, he's hitting the ball all at one pace, really. Even when he's going short, he's giving it a bit of a wallet. Grayson just stepping around the court. He's implementing that hold as well, isn't he? He's completely looking to break up the rhythm of Lopez. And you, you have to, you just can't let someone that, that loves to run, you can't let them run. Not in straight lines and, and without starting and stopping and mixing it up. Seven, one. It's too unforgiving. Shots have to have that extra attention to detail, otherwise you're gonna get punished for someone that knows what they're doing with a squash ball. So for me, Lopez, there's a lot of improvement in his game that could come with his racket work and his glass court play. Well, again, the ball sitting up for Lopez. He's got closed out. He's not. Oh, he's got a let. I'm going to review this because yeah, he was off court. the ball went quite a bit deeper than Lopez was it. expecting. He misjudged it, hence the kind of uh, head duck and then the desperate arse for the let. Comes in off the left leg, puts it in there. He's gone up line. and round. Yeah, that's a no let. I was initially around the sort of the 26, ah, 26 the mark. Loose as a goose. Yeah, because uh, I felt like I had a bit more touch than I did maybe have power. <laughs> um, but then as, as I got a bit older, I went to 30 because I, I wanted to really feel the ball with the, with the strings and get that cut. I think anything between kind of 28 to 30, I think, is a really sensible tension, again, for, for club players and amateurs. I think 28 pounds to 30, and we all... And the difference is, is if he's playing the ball with Lopez central, he can run onto it and he'll hit out very aggressively. He needs to take that position away initially before attacking him into the front. Yeah, 
were saying about the little details, it's another little detail. It's so easy to lose the balance of pushing someone back first out of position before attacking, isn't it? And then the difference between letting them just run onto that ball and hit out. Yeah, I think Grayson's aware how physical Lopez is and he's not wanting to get caught up in something here. And it's again, it's another encouraging himself. Nice trickle boast. I well, just had a quick glimpse of retro cam. Just stayed in. Again, though, he's allowing Lopez to suddenly have position and then run onto the ball at the front. Then the ball sits up, it gets put Six away, eight. and it, it then starts to apply pressure on how you take that ball in. It's a completely mistimed from Lopez, so what a bit of fortune, a real gift. This is where you want Lopez to, to be aware and to not just be sort of thinking internally. He needs to look at his opponent and see that there's signs of him fatiguing. 10-6, game ball. And they just keep it anywhere other than there. So regaining the ascendancy, Campbell Grayson serving with four game balls for a two love lead. Now, and there it's been gifted. So all the hard work at the mid-stage of the second Grayson being undone. Two games to love. Actually by Lopez himself, really. Well, this is going very, very south for the Spaniard. Yeah, it's good from Grayson. High quality stuff from the Kiwi. 9 2. Successful office for him here in New York. He's got eight match balls to book his place into the second round. And he's walloping it. But accurately as well. That's good play. Shut him down, shut him, shut him down. So Campbell Grayson, who extraordinary, he is uh, amazing uh, chap because he's played a, an excellent game there. He looks like he's been through World War II. You see his appearance, 26 minutes. Oh, Campbell, he's trying to get his breath back. Well, that was ripped, and that's a prime example of the destruction that this young man can cause on a squash court Five, right behind two. him, body weight. Compl <laughs> Certainly the crowd favourite here, Ramit Tandon. It's been through the US college system. Getting a huge amount, as you say, and local support. And, uh, I've got a question for you, Joey. Oh, my 
goodness, great. Oh, that's naughty. <laughs> he's, going, he's done. So again, referee would say here, it is a stroke, but Mr. Uh, Mr. Asal, please do not look for your opponent Correct. excessively again. Yeah. That's where you would make that. So two comments made. So the two extremes when you get a player is one looking for strokes and two blocking. And you could easily just, as a referee, just nip it in the bud. Correct. Say it, yep. and then we'd have a better second game anyway. Totally agree. I'm sure he is, yeah. Looks so. Per decision. So if that's the case, he'd be uh, quite wealthy <laughs> in this in. match. Quid's in. Well tidied, it was loose Beautiful. and it got what it deserved. Beautiful, beautiful technique and balance. Control of the racket had some serious uh, Left box. Schleiss Five on that. Two. Oh. That's very honest of the Indian. Acknowledged by Asal. He's enjoying this. There we go. So another cross court, Nick, from Mufasa. Left box, 9-3. This is when he's at his most watchable. Well, he just doesn't seem to have an answer, does he? I mean, you're hoping for the blip of uh, concentration from Asal, but he's just been unrelenting. Seven game balls for a two-love lead. <laughs> oh, quality. Pure exhibition stuff. Looking very, very good out there. This young Egyptian, the raging ball, now moving to a two-love lead in round one. Good start, and it's got to be a very positive start. He's got the crowd behind him here. Time. Yeah, a good squeeze again from Asal. 8-3. Really is executing all facets of the game at the moment. It's trouble. Yeah, terrific use of the lob. Great example for anybody watching there. Just completely takes the pace off the ball. Hand Rips along the back Five, wall. Nine. Being called Ten, into action seven. a lot. For something that's a three-love affair, there has been a lot of decisions, PJ. Yeah, it certainly has. Yeah, I'm sure this guilty. will be coming up and be noted by the director of the agency. Yeah, it's too good. Too good. 11 7, match to a star, three games to love. 11 8, 11 3, 11 7. Slam dunked. So another three love victory for Mustafa Al Sal over Ramit Tandon. to keep this crowd elevated. Always a partisan crowd here in New York. And 
it out. Even the speed of uh, Salazar five. unable to pick that up. Make use of that advantage. Oh, how well has he done there? How's he got that cross court? I don't know. He doesn't know. Nobody Eight, knows. Five. <laughs> Nobody knows. That's ridiculous. <laughs> He'll give it a go. It's good. He's gone oh. for it anyway. It's a decent serve. It's on the back foot from it, though. Yeah. Oh, it's a great opportunity. Ten all. Must when he read it, points. Salazar, he went hurtling Each into player, that front left-hand corner. Watch as he comes around with the boast. Yeah, he took too long to hit it, didn't he? Yeah. Took a long time to hit that. And again. Oh, he's got it. It's a winner. He's converted. That's a big first game for Hansen. Crowder getting to their feet, trying to encourage him here. It's actually quite a muted response. Well, Very gonna... subdued, wasn't it? Yeah. Thought it got absolutely bonkers, but yeah. I suppose it is only the first game. It's a clever shot, it's a great retrieval. Oh, that's a good hold. That's a good hold. That's the danger of a left-hander on that forehand side. You, you know, that I think sometimes what happens is right-handers play as though they're playing a right-hander. They almost forget the situation. In this a little bit physically. Yeah, you'd hope, wouldn't you, that... Oh, that's a nice shot. Well, wow, it's a great rally from Hansen. He really did need Eight this one. Seven, five. Oh, that's terrible timing. <laughs> that is terrible timing. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's taxi. Good it's that delay, isn't it? 10-7. Okay. Off to Rhode Island. <laughs> Three game balls for Salazar. He's done well to come back in this second. Out. Yeah, it's out. Well closed out. Salazar will be very relieved One game more. after the start he had in that second game, but it's pretty confident by the end of it. 11-7 to Salazar, and the Latin American has levelled a one game more. No, no danger of the wheels coming off for Salazar. Whoops. And out, two, three. It's one of the biggest things we see in the amateur game, Lee. How many times is, is a poor cross court punished? If you don't get that ball wide enough, it's just an invite for a volley for the opponent to make you then do the diagonal. Oh, See, that, so much ingenious that's, that's lovely touch from Hanson. He needs that. And out for all. Well, being a fellow lefty, Drew Boy, you know that's that strength area, isn't it? It's that area of the court that we're always trying to work the ball into. Yeah. Well, this is the danger for Salazar. He knows that Hansen's a bit tired, so he's Five, happy to take four. him into the front. But if the quality of the ball going in isn't good, Hansen's still good enough. Yeah. Dip of concentration from Salazar. Hansen looked down and out. Yeah. He does go walkabout sometimes, doesn't he, Salazar? That's Nine, unbelievable. Four. Six game balls, Hansen. A bit late now, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, that's one to forget for Salazar. Gives the Americans and Chris Hansen hope once more. Yeah, it's good. 
terrific length from Hansen. Really crisp hitting from Hansen. He sets himself perfectly Three, onto that. Four. Point for opening the door. Oh, unless, be a very brave man here. Unless invited to open it. Hand out. Four, five. Top spin the backhand down the line. It's just been going in waves this match. Yep. I don't think we've actually seen a phase of both players playing their best stuff at the same time. And he's given up the ghost Eight, here, Hanson. Yeah. Well, converted Eight, by Caesar Salazar. Salazar. Two games all. He's too good out of the range with that drive. Mind you, I suppose if you move like Salazar, you've got no problem with just pushing the ball around. Down. <laughs> Hand out. Three, four. This is very, very edgy. Neither player, for me at the moment, seems to be able to get the ball to the back of the court. It's all very kind of short and through the middle. There's good pressure from Salazar, just enough in the reach. So what? There's actually quite a few people going for Caesar Salazar here. Nine, Must be. Brave effort from Hansen. He's on the ropes here, though. A few diagonal court sprints to finish off. And well, there it is. That's Olympia well worked side. by Salazar. Salazar. Took a while, but he's got over the finishing line. 10, 12, little 7, 4, 11, 11, 8. Okay, it's a valiant five. effort by Hansen, losing out in 60 minutes to Salazar. We well, gave it his all, that's for sure. 61 minutes, 3-2. So they've gone up 3.5 3 or something from earlier here. That's what I mean with Todd Harity, kind of scuttles around the court but he connects very very well when Been better from Harity in this game. Loads better. Ball control's been a lot more accurate. It's important to use a bit of height, isn't it, against Leo Al, and then look to to attack from it, gain position, and then step forwards onto the ball. Well, massively. I mean, it's not rocket science. He's got unbelievable speed, Leo Al, but in terms of reach, he's one of the shorter players. Amazing. Very impressed by Harity's racket there. He hit it twice on the frame and it's not broken it. Hello. Beautiful skills from Leo out. And out six nine. Mature rally. Three game balls. The American number one. It's a draw level at one game apiece here in New York and he's oh it's gonna do it here he's done it he's done it he's done it that's awesome so a terrific response from Harity 
He's got his teeth into this one. Do you know what a person from Bristol is called? Bristolian. A Wurzel. is becoming really aerobic now. Oh, Yeah, I mean, this, this is crucial, this rally. It's gone out from Harity. It's one all five all. Harity starting to feel the physicality now. The crouching tiger. Well, the crouching tiger is giving nothing away. Oh, he's done it. He's got it over him. He just got it over him. Inch perfect lob. Just, I mean, this is by a whisker. Oh, just had enough. Tried to do the air walk. So Leo out manages to pull off the third game. When that was, came out, it was, um, it's unbelievable. Yeah, the, the way it was filmed. Oh, it's just completely state-of-the-art stuff. Fantastic. It was mesmerising. Good response. It's a nice play. Lob has to go higher, obviously. Two, three. He took this really early. Oh, that is sublime. That is sublime from Arity. Worked him beautifully, and then check out the soft hands. That's yeah, nicely played from Harity. It gives him control of that rally. Awesome stuff. USA number one producing the goods, lovely skill across the top of the tin. Yeah, just stayed in. Again, just staying in. Yeah, that's a good oh, volley. Oh, goodness me, what a volley. Oh, what, <laughs> what a shot. A, that's unbelievable, Squish. Look at that volley, full stretch, kept his balance, Harity. He's dug deep there. It's good athleticism from out. Really comfortable working. Todd Harity. Again, there's great movement in that front right corner from out. This is everything that's coming back. Leo Al's literally getting everything back at this stage. Yeah, but. This is Leo Al being quite intelligent and clever with what he's doing. OK, that wasn't the best ending, but he knows he's making himself really hard to break down. Yeah, big time. I mean, if the crowd can help, this is a time to help. He's actually playing quite quickly as well, isn't he? He's not well, he's really... Had a, he's had a second wind. He's had a second wind. He's looking very composed on the tee. His body his posture's looking stronger. It's an that, absolute scandal. That was outrageous. What a scandalous <laughs> shot. He's plucked that out. Oh, wonderful.
Amazing, really, isn't it? The turnaround just yesterday had been disappointed at having lost that match against Chris Gordon. And here he is with a shot of, of getting a victory. Well, Leo out. Very accurate down that backhand side. This is where he's got to, the crowd have got to get, get behind him here, take advantage of the home scenario. He's saving all his emotions for when he crosses that finishing line. There's the squeeze in squash terminology. <laughs> you can't get better than that. That's the most satisfying thing as a professional squash player. Two match balls for Leo Au as he gives nothing away. the error that's unlucky it was an unbelievably very awesome match terrific performance there from Todd Harity Leo Au who's just outside top 20 in the world played in tremendous spirit 65 minutes of very very high quality squash particularly after the first game get through this as efficiently as quickly as possible he knows that what Chris Gordon's been doing recently on the PSA World Tour. That he can be tricky. Now it's tidy work. It's deadly on that backhand side, Ryan Koskelly. 5-1. Too good. It's the long drop from the back of the court. 9 2. It's good power, PJ. A bit more bite. There's no point right doing box. all that. That training in the gym and lifting Six, those nine. monumental weights. <laughs> unless you... He's done well. Did very well to get out of that, PJ. He's played better the second half. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. oh, was he ready to play? Was he ready to play? Was he ready to play? Wait, are you appealing? Video referee decision on Koskelly's appeal. Uh, crash, crash, crash Gordon. Crash Flash Gordon. Follow, follow through. <laughs> crash Flash. <laughs> that is a stroke. Stroke oh. to Koskelly. 11-7, so game to Koskelly. Koskelly leads one game to love. Pressure from Koskelly, he's got himself in front of Chris Gordon here. Tidy work from Chris Gordon. He was patient there because he was under the cost for the most part. Yeah, he was. Six, Slightly four. loose. Well, yeah, that's yeah. a reason why it's called in. the Archer. And out, 5-6. It's a good squeeze. He's 
ready. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable reactions there from Pascali through the middle of the court. Very quick hands indeed. Quality rally. It's been a very physical second game. Down. 11 8, game to Cascelli. Cascelli leads two games to love. So Ryan Cascelli managing to hold off Flash Gordon. The error coming from the American. A few calf muscles pulled, that's for sure. Brilliant. It's a very good shot. Absolutely brilliant. It's, it's not the greatest shot. of lobs, but, no, but he's the control from the racket head of Kiskelly here. Watch this. Yeah. Good. Lots of experience. Usually, when Chris Gordon starts to get tired, he starts to look like a Ribena berry. <laughs> Terrific lob. What yeah. a change of pace. From Chris Kelly. And out 5 2. Not letting this get into that physical realm of uncomfortable squash for him. There's been a few signs of him struggling physically, but he's used his racket work and his experience to get him five points ahead in the third. And out 4 8. Six match balls for Cascali. He's done really well here because going on recent squash, Clash Gordon could have been a bit of a banana match skin, Kiskelly, but he's converted. Three games to love 11 7, 11 8, 11 4. So an entertaining night for American squash. No success, sadly, in the men. And it's Ryan Cascelli that seals the deal, keeping uh, the only Australian in this main draw alive. Three games to love. Victory for him.